What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to process and create YAML files in Python which is a very important skill for data scientists and especially if you want to do something with DevOps you should be very comfortable working with YAML files so let us get right into it. All right, so YAML is essentially a human readable data serialization language, which is oftentimes used for configuration files and oftentimes in the context of DevOps. It also has some features that other languages like JSON do not offer. And we're going to talk about those in this video today. We're also going to learn how to process and create YAML files using Python. And for this, we're going to need to install an external Python package called PyYAML, which we can do by opening up the command line and typing pip install PyYAML. And let's go ahead and create a simple YAML file just so to see what the syntax looks like. We're going to click on new file and we're going to call this example.yaml. So the file type is either .yaml or .yml. It's the same file type. You can see both are recognized by PyCharm. We have this um, YAML logo or YAML icon here. And we can now provide simple key value pairs. We can have lists, we can have dictionaries, we can have uh, multi line strings, and we can have some more advanced stuff that we're going to talk about later on in the video. But the basic idea is you have a key, you have a value specified like this, or you have my list here with some items, item one, item two, item three or something. Um, or you have some stuff like uh, my dict, and then you have key value pairs here, key one, value one, key two, value two, or you can have some multi line string, for example, multi line str, which is started by a pipe symbol here. And then I can say, hello world. This is a multi line string. And of course, we can also have more than two lines. So this is n lines as many lines as we want. And we can now easily just go into Python and load this file into our Python script using the py, PyYAML package. And we're going to just do this here for the example once, then we're going to use a different file, we're going to build a simple number guessing game, we're going to import a configuration from the YAML file, and then we're going to also look at the more advanced features. So let's get started by just importing YAML. So even though we install PyYAML, we're going to import YAML. Um, and the basic idea is that we say with open example YAML in reading mode as F, we're going to just say that the data or the config or whatever is going to be F dot read. Um, or actually, sorry, this is different. We're going to say YAML dot load, and we're going to load from the file directly. So we're not going to call F dot read and then parse the string, we're going to say YAML dot load, or we can also say YAML dot safe load from the file here. Um, then we can just specify the file stream. And then we can print the content. So if I run this, you can see here, this was turned into a Python dictionary, we have the key, the value, then we have a list with the individual items, we have a dictionary with the key value pairs, and we have this uh, one multi line string here with the respective line breaks. So this is the essence of what we're going to do today. Now we're going to uh, use the example of a number guessing game to specify a config, then we're going to go into some more advanced stuff. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do that here. So we're going to delete this file now and we're going to create where's the delete, there you go. We're going to delete this file, we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call this game config dot YAML. Um, and here we can specify a simple game config something like the range of the numbers, the minimum number is going to be one and the maximum number is going to be I don't know, 100 or something. Then we can also specify the option of the guesses, how many guesses does the player have, let's say we have five by default. Um, and then we can also say uh, we want to have a mode and the mode can either be a single player or a multiplayer. Let's go and say single is going to be in this configuration. And based on this file, now we can just change the workings of the number guessing game. So we can implement this game by just importing random by importing YAML, of course, and then we can just say with open game config YAML in reading mode as F, we can say that the config is going to be YAML dot safe load F. 
So then we have the config file and then we can get the individual field. So we can say range minimum is going to be config. And then from the config, we want to get the range. And from the range, we want to get the minimum. We're going to copy that and we're going to also load the maximum. And then also the guesses allowed, which is going to be config guesses. And I think also whether we have a multiplayer or a single player. So we're going to say the mode is going to be config mode. And depending on whether this is a single player game or a multiplayer game, we're going to either generate a random number or we're going to have player two provide the number. Uh, we're going to say also solve equals false. This is going to be for the game. Um, and the basic idea is we're going to say if the mode is single, then we're going to generate the numbers. So the random uh, or actually, let's call it correct underscore number is going to be a random dot rand int and the range is going to be the range min and range max. So what we loaded from the config. And otherwise, if the mode is multiplayer, and we're just going to assume that there are no other values. So if it's not single, it's going to be multiplayer, we're not going to check for invalid configuration or something, or actually, let's do that. Let's just go ahead and say elif mode equals multi, then we're going to do something. And otherwise, we're going to say, uh, print invalid config, and then exit. And here we're going to say that the correct number is going to be specified by the user. So it's not going to be randomly generated. But since we're going to play on the same machine, we don't want to just use a random input, uh, not just a random, uh, a clear text input, We want to have the get pass input so that the player one cannot see what player two put in. So we're going to say import get pass. And we're going to say here that this is going to be int from get pass dot get pass, the prompt is going to be player two, please enter the number to guess. Um, and then this is going to be the correct number. So after this, we're going to just have the simple game loop, we're going to say four I in range, and we're going to have the number of guesses allowed here. So four number uh, four I in range guesses allowed, we're going to say the guess of the user is going to be int of input, enter your guess. And then we're going to say if the guess is equal to the correct number, we're going to print correct, you need it, and then I actually I plus one tries, we're going to make this an F string here. Then elif if the guess is less than the correct number, we're just going to print to low. And otherwise, we're going to print to high. And again, we're just going to assume that the user will enter a valid number. If we enter ABC, the program is going to crash, but we're not going to handle all the exceptions here now because that's not the focus of the video. Um, and then we're going to say if not solved in the end, and if it is solved, we're going to say solve equals true and break. And if not solved after the loop, we're going to say you lost the number was and we're going to just say here correct number. There you go. So what's the problem here? Um, can be undefined. Actually, it cannot be undefined because we would exit the script here. So it actually should be defined every time. So let's see what happens if I run this now from the single player configuration, I can enter a guess, let's say 90 too low. Oh, actually, this is interesting. 99 is too high 96. Yeah, 96 was correct. Okay, this was lucky, because the number was quite high. And I already started with 90. Uh, but you can see we had now four tries, if I enter one, 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 five times, uh, you can see too low and it already um, terminated because I only have five tries, but I can go into the config and say now, okay, I want to have 10 guesses. And I want to have the range one to 1000. 
So I can start now, I can say 500, you can see too high, 250, too high, uh, 150, too low, 200, too low, 225, too low, 240, and so on and so forth. Oh, this was lucky again. Uh, you need six tries, but you can see we can change the config. And to test this, uh, the multiplayer, we actually have to use something else than PyCharm because we had this in another video already. PyCharm is not able to handle the get pass input here. So I can change this to multiplayer, but I have to run it from terminal. So I'm going to go to the Python directory. Um, okay, actually, this is not the correct one. We need to go into this one here. Um, and then we're going to start the main py file. And here now I can say, okay, I want the number to be 80, for example. We can see 80 is not displayed on the screen. I told you it was 80, but it is not visible on the screen. So now I can say 70, I can say 90, I can say 81, I can say uh, 79, and I can say 80, and then you can see it works. So this is how you load a basic config from the YAML files. Now, let me briefly show you how we can uh, write YAML files, and then I wanna show you an advanced feature which is quite impressive or quite useful. Uh, so to write YAML files, it's not too complicated. You just, let me just open up a new Python script here, writer.py. Uh, all you have to do is you have to say import YAML again. You have to say with open some file.yaml in writing mode, sf. And then we can say um, yaml.dump. And here we would need to have some data. So let's create a dictionary. Let's say data equals... And we can say here name equals Mike, then we have H is 25. And then we have maybe something like languages, Python, C, Java, and then maybe address is going to be a dictionary with city, let's say New York City, and then maybe zip code. I don't know what the zip code of New York City is or what a valid zip code would be. So I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, and then country, maybe US, and then you could also add a street or something. That is our data. So we can now just say yaml.dump this data uh, into F. And we're going to say that the default flow style is going to be false. Then I can run this here and you can see we have some file YAML with the respective information inside of the YAML file. So that's quite simple. Uh, now I want to show you a more advanced feature, which is quite interesting. And this is something that definitely is not supported in JSON, uh, for example. And this is you can reference individual instances of the YAML configuration. So if you have a YAML file with certain uh, key value pairs or certain objects, you could say you can access those um, or you can reference those objects in the YAML file. So for example, I can create a new file here. Let's call this complex.yaml. And let's say that we have an address, for example, uh, and we're going to say now this is ant address. So we're going to create this reference here. And we're going to say that I don't know, we have some street. Let's call this uh, my fancy street 15. And then we're going to say we have a city my city, and we're going to have a state, my state, whatever. Uh, this is now an address object, which we can reference in different other objects. So I can say, for example, I have a person one, and the person one will have a name and the name will be john, for example, and we're going to have an age and john will be 35. And then we're going to say that john has an address and the address of john is star address. So this is like pointers, we have the reference here, we have um, this star operator to reference this object here. And this basically means that now the address of person one is this, and we can do the same thing with person two. So I can actually say here person two will be Bob and Bob will be 65. And he will have the same address. And now we can just create um, another Python script complex.py, for example, and we can just load this. So we can say import YAML. And then with open complex, let me just zoom in here, complex YAML, or was it YML? Yes, 
in reading mode sf we're going to say data equals yaml safe load f and then we can just print the data and you will see that we now have the address actually inside of the individual uh, person objects here. So we have person one, which is the key, then we have the value, which is this dictionary. And you can see that from the reference, which is just star address, which references this address here, um, we got the full address key value pair in our person two and person one key value pairs. So this is a feature that JSON, for example, does not offer. And um, yeah, YAML is essentially quite useful. Oftentimes, it's used for configuration files, as I already mentioned for DevOps. Um, and this is definitely something that you should know about, you should be comfortable working with YAML files. Now, last but not least, I just want to show you a quick example of a YAML file that is used, for example, for the language configuration, this is from the LG hub. So for the camera that I'm recording with, this is a language file. So you have these key value pairs, where you have um, the identifier and then the text in this case, the English text, and then you have also the same for German and Spanish and stuff like that. This would be one uh, example, one real life example of a YAML file um, that is used with an actual or for an actual software. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.